This is a tutorial video showing you how to make a homemade custom knife using the stock removal method. Now up until this project I had only made handles for knives that I had pre-purchased. So this is my first uh, full custom knife. I took a few days to finish the project from start to finish. A lot of that time was spent simply waiting for resin and epoxy to cure. So here's a video and some pictures showing you how I did it. Hope you enjoy. I started out with a piece of 1095 high carbon steel that was an eighth of an inch thick and a nickel silver pin which will be used to hold the handle scales on later. I sketched the original design on a piece of cardboard and once I got it to the shape that I wanted I traced it onto the steel uh, to cut out. I did most of the rough cutting with a portable bandsaw. After cutting most of the design out with the portable bandsaw, I took it to the bench grinder to remove the extra steel and to get the final outline that I wanted. Dunking the blade in water keeps the temperature down. And after removing the excess, I put the initial bevel, going for a hollow grind here. A little difficult with a small wheel. And this is what I was left with after the bench grinder. I didn't get a perfectly even edge. Uh, there were some rough patches since it was all freehanded, so I used a Dremel tool to try and even it out. After the Dremel tool, I marked and drilled the three holes that will be used to hold the handle scales on. And after drilling, I just use some sandpaper to clean up the blade before heat treating. Heat treating the blade will harden the steel and help it to hold an edge.
Now I tried to do what I could with what I had available for heat treating, uh, but I don't recommend this. It's very difficult to get the blade to critical temperature with just uh, two torches. There are plenty of tutorials online on how to build homemade furnaces, or you can just use a fire pit with an air source uh, to get your blade heated up. But I was just barely able to reach critical temperature with these two torches. And the way you know uh, that you're at critical temperature is you test the magnetism of the blade. Once it's no longer magnetic, you're ready to quench the steel. The bucket's just got some canola oil in it. And if you'll notice, I touched the blade against a magnet that I had on the floor right before I dipped it into the oil. Hardening the steel makes it very brittle, so afterwards I tempered the blade by baking it in the oven at 400 degrees for an hour and a half. There's plenty of cleanup to do after heat treating. So once again, it's back to the sanding. For this knife, I decided to make handle scales out of micarta, which I made out of denim jeans and a t-shirt. Cut your material into strips that will be large enough to make two handle scales. You can use basically any fabric you'd like. Micarta is made using a fiberglass resin. Here I am just mixing the hardener, and once you mix the hardener, you have roughly 12 to 20 minutes, depending on the temperature and how much hardener you add. You know you're running out of time when the fiberglass resin starts heating up. Fiberglass resin sets faster in hotter temperatures. To make micarta, you're going to coat each layer of fabric in fiberglass resin, and then sandwich the finished stack between two boards and clamp it down tight, using wax paper to prevent the resin from adhering to the wood. Now you want to apply plenty of resin, you can't add too much as all the excess will be squeezed out in the clamping process. It's really not possible to put too much on. Now since this is so tedious, I'll just speed up a lot of it. And we're down to the final strip. Lay the last one on, put a little extra fiberglass resin, and then you're ready to wrap it and clamp it. So now that I've got it wrapped, add the second board to give you two flat surfaces, and then you add your clamps. Now make sure your boards are even so you have a final finished slab that's even all the way across. Once clamped, it's best to let the micarta set for about 24 hours.
After peeling off all of the wax paper, you're left with your slab of micarta. I use the bandsaw to remove all the rough edges, give me a nice clean stock. Cut the stock in half and you have your two handle scales. And if you want more information on making homemade micarta, there are plenty of excellent tutorials on YouTube. And these are my finished handle scales. I sanded them flat to make sure they would fit flush against the blade tang before I applied them. And since it's difficult to reach the front end of the handle slab once you've attached it, it's best to finish that portion before you attach it to the blade. So right now I'm just rounding the front edge of the scales before I apply them. Otherwise, when you sand, you have, you're on the risk of uh, scratching the blade. It is best to wear a respirator mask as the dust is toxic. Now before applying the handle scales, I countersunk the holes in the tang to give the epoxy some extra room. This is the countersunk tang. Not really a necessary step, but I like to do it. After cutting the pin into three pieces, I placed each bit into the drill press and sanded it rough to give the glue something to adhere to. And then you clamp your tang to one of the handle scales and drill the three holes. After drilling the three holes, you attach the second slab and line it up with the first, and then drill through the first handle slab, through the tang, and into the second handle scale to make sure that all your holes are lined up. And after drilling the holes, I place the pins in just to keep everything aligned. Now since the epoxy I'm using to apply the handle scales is uh, a quick set, it sets in five minutes, I'm going to do this in two steps, although if you get a, a longer curing epoxy, you can do this in one, in one step. 
So right now I'm applying the epoxy to one of the handles, just to the holes, and I'm going to place the pins in there where I need them, and then let that set. Now that I have my three pins in place, I should let it set for 24 hours, but I'm a little impatient. I mixed up another batch of five minute epoxy and I applied it to both sides of the tang. And then you're just gonna put all the pieces together. Sandwich them together, and then clamp it tight. And wait another 24 hours. And you will have a big brick of a knife. A lot of people like to rough cut their handle scales before applying them. I just use a bandsaw to remove the excess once they're attached. After removing most of the excess with the bandsaw, I set to work on the belt sander to get the scales closer to their finished shape. Now you don't want to overheat it, otherwise you run the risk of melting the glue. This is after the belt sander. And then I set to work with the Dremel tool. A Dremel tool with the belt, or a Dremel tool with the uh, drum sander helps you get into the nooks and crannies and get a finished shape before hand sanding. Now right now I'm just sanding some grooves into the handles to give it some texturing. And after the Dremel, you're ready to hand sand.
When sanding my carta, treat it just like wood and go progressively to finer grits. And once I got down to the final grit, this was the finished handle. After that, you just need to clean the blade up and put your edge on. Now be sure not to overheat the blade in this final step as it can ruin your heat treat. So here's the finished knife. I put the final edge on it using my sharpening stones, finishing the work that I started with the belt sander. If you're wondering if it's sharp, the answer is yes. Hope you found the tutorial helpful. We'll see ya.